Today I'm going to build a subscription tracker inside of Notion. More specifically, what I want to show you here is how we can return recurring monthly payments and how we can do this automatically. All we'll need is one date property. We'll have to find the original date that we started paying for this subscription. From there, we can find the next payment we need to make from right now and the last payment made. What we'll also do in this database is create a database view for subscriptions we wish to cancel. Let's just get right into it. So I went ahead first and I created a list of example subscriptions. So inside of this database, we're starting with the name of the subscription, of course, the original payment date. So this is a date property. We will need this to create these reoccurring payment schedules, the amount it costs and a remove checkbox. This is going to be helpful when we create that database view for all the subscriptions you want canceled. So let's get started with a select property called frequency. So this is important because not all subscriptions are monthly. We're going to use the examples monthly, quarterly, and yearly. And yearly. The next thing we want to do is create that formula for the next monthly payment. Let's just hide some of this. I'd remove and create next payment. Make sure the property type is a formula down in advanced and let's get started. Firstly, what we wanna do is determine if, so we're using an if function here, if frequency. So how are if statements set up? What we're basically saying is if this, then that. So if prop frequency equals we're gonna use two equal signs for equals and monthly. Let's start with that one. If this is the case, I want to add a certain amount of months to the original payment date. Date add to property original payment. What I'm gonna say is how many months from right now and the original payment are there and then add one more month on top of that. So that'll give us the next month we have to pay. So the way date add works is we're going to add a certain amount of whatever. So value, let's say maybe three, we could say days. And it will give us three days in the future. April 1st will give us April 4th. This now here is a false condition. So basically saying every single time frequency equals monthly, we will add three days. If it doesn't equal monthly, so if it equals yearly or is blank, then just give us right now. And there's where you see in yearly, we're seeing the date of today and the time of today. So we don't want three days in the future. We want every single amount of months from now and the original payment date. So instead of three, we're gonna say date between right now and the original payment date. And I want to see the number of months between it. But I'm not adding the number of days here. I'm adding months. So we're going to erase days with months. And you'll see that original payment at Spotify is April 1st, 2016. And the next payment would be April 1st, 2021. The thing is, we need to add one more month. So after this date between function, I'm just going to say plus one. And you'll see everything shift here. Right now that I'm filming this is April 19th. So if we look at April 1st, I've already paid for this month. So it's not gonna tell me April 1st, it's gonna say my next payment is May 1st. Same goes for Squarespace. We have November 21st, 2019 as the original payment. So the next payment will actually be within this month because it is not the 21st yet. So it'll say the next payment is this month on the 21st. What we're gonna do is create another if statement for yearly. So let's actually just copy all of this, paste it in. Instead of monthly, let's say yearly for the second one. And we're just gonna replace months here with years and years again down here. It says that there is a parentheses expected at the end of this formula. That's because there are now two if statements. So we need to add another parentheses at the end. Going down to quarterly, we still have not made an if statement for quarterly. So it is still showing us the false condition, which is right now with the time. Let's go ahead and add that if statement. Again, I'm just gonna copy and paste. 
because the uh, if statement structure is pretty much the same, we're just replacing in here yearly with quarterly. And instead of years here, we're gonna say quarters. And remember that I'm pretty sure this is case sensitive, so you will have to have all this be lowercase within the date between and date add functions. Change this to quarters as well. And a parentheses at the end because we have a third if statement. Looking at a quarterly subscription, we can see that Coffee & Co is January 12th, 2018 is the original payment. That is Q1. If we wanna see what quarter a certain date is, you can use a formula to do that as well. You can go format date, make sure you have a uh, date capitalized, go to original payment or whatever date property you want. You can also do right now, and that's now with an open and close parentheses. You can format date to just capital Q and you'll get the quarter. The next thing I wanna show you is how to calculate all of the money spent on each one of these subscriptions. So let's create another property called spent. And again, it's going to be a formula property. Property type, go down to formula. The frequency equals monthly. Then what I wanna do is find the date between right now, now open close parentheses, and the original payment. And I wanna find the number of months between them. What I also wanna do is I wanna multiply this amount of months to the amount of money spent. Now have that false condition there. Let's just make it zero for now and close it out with one parentheses because there's only one if statement. I can go to this one, two, three button, go down to dollar to make sure it is dollars or whatever currency is appropriate for you. It is not counting the original payment. So an easy fix for this is to go into this date between function right here, and we're just gonna add plus one. Plus one. Now what I have to do here is also isolate the date between function plus one. So we're gonna have a close parentheses after one and an open one before date between. Again, doing the same thing, we're gonna include yearly and quarterly, and that's just copying this if statement here like we did before just makes things go a lot quicker. Instead of monthly, let's say yearly and years. We have the false condition here with two parentheses at the end and then we're just gonna do it one more time for quarterly. Third parentheses at the end and this is what we have. We can also sort this by descending so we can see what we spent the most of at the top and the least at the bottom. Let's take a look at how we can find the last payment. So this is pretty much identical to next payment, just with a slight modification. So we're gonna create a formula. Because there is such a slight modification, I'm just gonna copy next payment, paste it into last payment, and I'm just removing that plus one. Whenever we see a plus one, remove it. Let's hide last payment. We'll see inside of these cards, of course, that it does show up, even though we hit it inside of the database view. Move some stuff around. So next, what I wanna do is I wanna create that database view to look at all of our canceled subscriptions or all the ones we wanna cancel. So let's just add a view canceled subscriptions, go to list, and let's create a filter. And simply say, if remove is checked, have it show up in this view. It shows us the original payment date. I don't really wanna see that. Let's go to properties. I wanna see the amount, the frequency, and the remove checkbox, just in case we wanna uncheck it to remove it from this view, like that. Let's go back up to recurring payments. We'll see uh, Curiosity Stream is still here. I don't wanna see it in this view once I remove it. So I'm gonna create a filter that's pretty much the opposite. Add filter and just say remove is unchecked. And you'll see that Curiosity Stream has been removed from this main view. 
So this is the subscription tracker, pretty much completed, but what I want to do here is show you how you can use it. So let's just turn this to a page and assume it's somewhere else in your database. Turn into a page. Now let's pretend this is your main dashboard page and you want to link to this database because what you want to see at the top of your dashboard is all of your upcoming payments. Let's go forward slash linked, create a linked database and we're going to find subscriptions. From here, let's clean it up. Let's have it in list view. Let's delete that original table view because it's not really needed. Let's go into one of these cards. What we'll have to determine is if next payment contains the month we're currently in. So for example, if a subscription, the next payment, right now I'm in April, it says May. That means that that subscription has already been paid for this month of April. So I don't want to see it in this view. So this requires a simple formula. Formula. And this checkbox will just read the month of right now equals the month of next payment. Pretty simple. I just want to know if the months match up. What we're going to do is create a filter inside of this link database. Filter to make sure that upcoming is checked. So this will take all of our subscriptions that are being paid for this month that have not yet been paid for. The date you see over here is the next payment date and that's just going to properties and checking off next payment. I can also check off the amount I'll be paying that will be coming out of my bank account. So from here, what can we do? We can create a sort. So let's go to sort and just make sure that the next payment date is ascending. So this is the one closest to us right now and Curiosity Stream will be the furthest away. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go right into the outro. So I really hope this subscription tracker can be of use to you or simply that recurring uh, monthly payment formula. Really, you could use that for anything, not just finances. And of course, there's a link down below to duplicate this template. Also, a couple things. Firstly, I have reached 500 newsletter subscriptions. So thank you if you are a subscriber of my newsletter. Secondly, I've published an icons and cover images package on my Gumroad product page. If you guys wanna go check that out, you can download those icons. I might have some examples up here on the screen. It is totally free or you can choose your own price. I will see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next week with a new video. I'll see you then.